Rock salt is always going to be your lowest cost source of sodium chloride. So for direct application de-icing, that's going to be your best bet. The slightly higher purity and lower insolubles of the solar salt are going to have little practical difference. They're going to make little practical uh, impact on the ice melting performance and probably not worth the extra cost. Now sometimes rock salt might not be available and you'll, and you'll be using solar salt and you may be wondering, is there anything special I need to know about that? Well, let me just point out a couple of caveats about solar salt to bear in mind just because solar salt is not typically intended to be used for de-icing. I mean, it'll work fine, but that's not what it's most commonly used for. So one, one uh, ramification of this is screen size, particle size. ASTM designates a particular size range of salt crystals for use in de-icing. And rock salt is typically going to be screened to meet that specification. Solar salt will not. However, it's probably not going to make a lot of difference. Uh, typical water softening solar salt will often meet the ASTM size, crystal size gradation specifications, or it'll be close. And as long as it's not too far off, it's still going to perform just fine from a de-icing standpoint. If it's important to you that the salt meet the strict specification of the ASTM standard, you can certainly contact the solar salt manufacturer and get information on the particle size gradation. Another thing to be aware of with solar salt is that because it's not typically used for de-icing, it's not going to be treated with an anti-caking agent. Rock salt, most commonly for de-icing, has an anti-caking agent added to it. And this prevents it from hardening up in outdoor storage. So if you've got solar salt and it's undried or it's going to be stored outside and exposed to the elements, it's probably going to be more prone to caking and getting hard than rock salt is. So it might require more protection than rock salt does to keep it free flowing. So in conclusion then, there's no particular ice melting performance benefit from solar salt. If salt's not available, rock salt's not available, and you want to use solar salt, it's going to be a perfectly effective alternative. But from a strictly de-icing performance standpoint, it's not really worth the extra money. One de-icing application where it might be worth the extra money, however, is if you are using it to make a liquid de-icer or make a brine. The use of liquid de-icers is getting more popular with each passing year. And so more and more people now are making their own salt brine. They are buying brine makers and dissolving salt to make liquid de-icers. Now, if you are running a brine maker, you're in a similar situation to having a water softener. You're making brine. So if you've got a brine maker, you may want to consider using a more pure salt, like a solar salt, just to avoid the headaches associated with the insolubles in rock salt. But either one will work fine. So that's what I have for you today. I hope this was useful. Please don't hesitate to send in more questions. Uh, I'm Dr. Scott, and I will be talking to you again soon.